Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a little wrap up of this box that I have of uh, Treasury of Children's Classics. So I actually picked this up from a car boot sale for about £3, and I had a couple of these books in these editions before. I actually sent my duplicates, I sent them to uh, Anthony Andrews as well. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through each of the six books in the collection from my least favourite to my favourite. So we'll start off with my least favourite, and I will say I enjoyed all of these books. Some of them I didn't actually read this like in these editions because I'd already read them before. But um, so my least favourite was Black Beauty by Anna Sewell. I still gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It's like a classic children's novel told from uh, like told by a horse, and it follows this this horse's life story. It's kind of famous for making people cry, but uh, I have a, a heart of stone apparently, so I, I did not cry. But I did really appreciate how it highlighted. Uh, you know issues around animal cruelty animal abuse and it had quite a positive message I think um, I don't know sort of how relatable it necessarily is because it's so kind of alien from our own lives I mean I think I, I read and she, she died in 1888 or something so it's certainly sort of quite old school but uh, that, yeah I enjoyed it I, I'm glad that I've read this. this this is one of those books that everyone should read you know okay next up and hot on uh, the, the tale of uh, Black Beauty actually we have Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson so I read this and I realized I think I did read it when I was a kid as well I remember starting to read it and I got to the, sort of the end of the bit at the inn which is quite near the beginning before they actually set sail uh, to, to to the Treasure Island but uh, yeah, I reread it and uh, it, it was all right. Uh, it kind of slow, got, got a bit slow towards the end. Basically, this is the, the story of, um, uh, you know, there, there is a treasure map and they... <laughs> I'm explaining this so badly, I'm butchering these classics. And none of these have blurbs as well. A bunch of people go in search of some buried treasure, basically. And we have a, a, a ship's cook called Long John Silver who may or may not be trustworthy. That's all I'm saying about that one. So yeah. Uh, yeah, all these are by uh, Robert Frederick Publishing as well, by the way. All right, and then next up we have a Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. So I actually really enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would. Um, the writing style was quite quite intense I guess it's one of the oldest ones in this collection in fact I think it is the oldest book in this collection and and you can kind of tell I should point out as well all of these are illustrated some of them are illustrated more than others and the print size differs um, so you know depending upon the length of the book and it was a really enjoyable read I really enjoyed like the survivalist elements of it I think that was the main thing that I enjoyed, to be honest. Basically, Crusoe is uh, stranded on this desert island and he finds himself coming up against these cannibals. And so then it gets kind of quite tactical and there's this sort of warfare between them as well. I did enjoy that too. The main bits that I didn't like were the bit leading up to when he got stranded on the island and the bit afterwards. And then suddenly it ends abruptly as well. He sort of starts a new adventure, gets surrounded by wolves, kills them all, and then it's like, the end. Okay. But uh, yeah, those are my bottom three. Here are my top three. So up next we have... Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. Now, I believe this is like Murphy Napier's favourite book or one of her favourite books. I know she uh, really enjoyed it when she read it. I do, li I do like the story of Peter Pan. I actually prefer this to the movies. I was never, like, I didn't really get... It wasn't one of those movies that I got raised on, even though most people of my generation were really into it. So, my first experience, really, of Peter Pan the story was through the novel, which was quite cool. I did like it. I thought it was quite dark in places as well. And um, just J.M. Barry's quite an interesting person in general. So, um... Yeah, I would, I would, you know, well, obviously, I recommend all of these, to be honest, but it was, uh, Peter Pan was, was particularly good. Then we have The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, and this was, like, surprisingly good. I did film a review of this, which I'll link to below. Some of my favourite parts in this were, like, for example, they go across a field of poppies and they all fall asleep, and that's just a sort of blatant opium reference, which I thought was quite entertaining. Everyone kind of knows the story. Again, this wasn't necessarily a movie that I was raised on. I had seen it before reading the book, but I didn't really remember it. And to be honest, I think I prefer the book. It was just such a good read. Um, yeah, just phenomenal. But there could only be one winner, and that is, of course, Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, which is probably one of my favourite classics in general. Uh, definitely, I would say, my favourite children's classic. So it was always going to come out on top, really. I've read it a bunch of times as well. And, um, yeah, it's Alice in Wonderland. I like the fact... I think it was uh, Queen... Was it Queen Victoria? Was it... Uh, read Alice in Wonderland and loved it and asked him to dedicate his next book to her. So he did, but his next book was just like a non-fiction book about mathematics, which I think is a great story. All the characters in this are just iconic. You know, it's just become part of popular culture and... I think everyone should read uh, Alice in Wonderland at least once. And also, it's just one of those books where, like, nothing had ever been done like that before, you know? And so, um, so yeah, 
it, it was quite the feat to pull it off, I think. So there we have it. Those are my opinions on the six books in the Robert, Robert Frederick Publishing uh, Children's Classics box set. Really enjoy going through these, and uh, again, I got it for a bargain, which is pretty good as well. Uh, so if, if you can get it cheap, I would recommend it. Why are you meowing, cat? This is actually my second last box set as well, so now the only box set I've got left to go through is uh, my Penguin Little Black Classics. And I have no idea how I'm going to do my wrap-up of that, because there are 80 of them. So, I don't know. But stay tuned, and, and we'll find out together. So yeah. There we go, that's what I thought, so as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.